Today, I am going to talk about how I do oil washes using artist oils like this one. Um, yeah, I've uh, been doing this kind of stuff since I was about nine, so that was over 40 years ago. <laughs> so, needless to say, I've done a lot of this stuff, and uh, I'd have to say, I'd have to say, hands down, oil washes are the best washes. Um, now, you can buy a lot of, obviously, a lot of um, products like MIG and ammo and whatever um, that are enamel washes, and um, I'm assuming I haven't used a lot of those, so I'm assuming that they're probably pretty close. Um, so, the thing about oil washes is that they they will they have better capillary action than any acrylics that I've used. Um, so what happens is the oil wash goes more directly into cracks and around things like bolts and into all the details, whereas the acrylics tend to be, they kind of, you know, water has a different surface tension than the oil, so it, it, it'll uh, sort of go into little droplets and you have to really work with it to get it into the areas where you want it, whereas oils, um, they'll go right into the area that you're trying to get the wash to flow into. Um, there are a couple uh, acrylic washes that aren't too bad. Check out Panzer Schule if you haven't, but uh, I've seen them using these uh, ammo acrylic washes and yeah, they are pretty good. So I could understand if you want to keep all of your stuff acrylic because this stuff probably freaking destroys your liver and you'll end up, you know, short of brain cells and sitting in a puddle of your own pee wondering where you are. Um, but it's a damn good wash. Whereas this one, you might live to a nice old age and uh, that might be good. I don't know yet. I'm not that old yet. I can't comment on that. But anyway, let's fuck this off for now. But yeah, if you're looking for a good acrylic alternative, I would go with this. But I've used this for a few probably about five or six projects, and it still isn't the same as this guy. Now, what is this shit? These are just your standard, standard Windsor Newton Artist oils that you get at an art supply store. Um, and these have been with me since 1994. I use a dark wash for everything because I like the contrast, especially getting down into 15 millimeter scale. I find it really makes the vehicles pop. So it may not be the most realistic to go with a super dark wash on everything, but I don't give a shit. I like the way it looks. Um, so that being said, this is... I guess I'd say maybe half the tube is gone, maybe a little more, um, since 1994. So imagine how many, you know, bottles of wash you might have bought in that time, uh, where one tube can go the whole way. Um, I would recommend also using like a fairly, like Windsor Newtons, they're kind of like middle ground in terms of cost and, and how nice the oils are. Um, Windsor Newton seem to work fine. Uh, I haven't used any like super crappy oils, although I would say that this, this is my black and this tube was also from 1994 when I was in art school. I first started and foundation, we were using all kinds of different shit. I ended up going into jewelry and graphic design, but I had all these paints left over. Um, and this is, you know, this is a large tube of black. And again, 1994, it's still going strong. The oil still works fine. Um, this stuff is Stevenson, oh, which was made in Toronto. <laughs> I just moved from there. Ivory black. Um, and again, I probably won't even finish this tube before I freaking hit the ground. <laughs> so, there is that. So, uh... Let's get into the process of making oils. <laughs> oils. Fuck. See, let me take another 
<laughs> go with this. We're going to make some of them oils. Eh. No, we are going to make oil washes. So, the oil in the oil washes, um, I think it's actually a kind of linseed oil, perhaps. I could be wrong about that. So, if you're out there and you're like an expert on oils, you can comment or be like, yeah, they do use linseed oil. They use a different kind of fucking oil. It doesn't matter. They put a binder oil in this that's quite heavy. So, when you're going to make an oil wash, I take a scrap of cardboard. You don't need a lot because a little goes a long way. So, I'm going to jam a bit of black on it. And you can see too near the top. The oil kind of settles to the top of the tube. Um, it's extra oily, so the cardboard is just going to soak up the oil. Um, because if you put really oily oil paint on, it'll take like months, and I'm not even kidding. Well, maybe not these colors. Some of these colors might take more like a week. Um, but I did do a project once, and we'll get into that later, that took months, months like many months, like more than half a year months, for it to actually dry. <laughs> so you got to be careful with oils. First step is get some of the extra oil from the paint out. I'm going to take my, uh, my uh, raw umber, which is a very dark brown. This is my wash color of choice. I use it for everything. The other thing too is when you've got a dark wash and you're making your own wash, you can easily control um, how watery it is. So if it if it's looking a little too dark in a spot, you can always just add a bit more of the thinner and it'll lighten down. Then this is just your um, yellow ochre. So raw umber, yellow ochre, black obviously, they're kind of like they're kind of like a standard palette for oils if you're doing you know, outside or portraits or whatever. Yellow ochre is very yellowy though, so I usually tone it down with a bit of the raw umber if I'm making like a, a sandy color or, well yeah, sandy color. Otherwise it, it'll be a, a very yellowy looking sand. And then here uh, for rust, I'm going to just put a tiny, use a tiny amount. I don't put a lot of rust on my vehicles. I find just one or two little spots of rust here and there are nice. And I do a lot of my weathering with oils in 15 millimeter scale. Um, I find that like the pigment powders are kind of overbearing and less controllable than the oils. Um, so we'll get into that later when we start washing. Um, this is just my opinion too. I know some people out there love that stuff and they're like, that's fine. I'm just saying for me, I find this gives you a kind of a more controllable, more or less overbearing. Like I find the, 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 the pigments in 15 mil, if you're using around tracks and stuff, um, it's just, it's too much. Too much for me anyway. Again, I like all those details popping out and it's a shame to paint something up nice and do all the little tires on the tank wheels and then have them completely disappear because of your weathering. You know, it might be more realistic, but some, I forego some of the realism just to make them look pretty. And then I'm going to put a bit of the white down. Um, white is, so if I'm making a dusty sort of wash for around tracks and wheels, I'll use ochre, white, and just a touch of black. And you put too much black in your ochre, it's going to turn green. So I usually dull down the ochre a bit with black first till I get it to kind of like a, it's almost like a khaki color. And then, and then you jam in some of the white to lighten it down and you get a more dusty color. So when I put these on the cardboard, I'm going to let these sit up to an hour. Um, yeah, you really want that excess oil to soak out into the cardboard. And this is all, I mean, this is, I won't even use all of this for a wash project. That's why it lasts for so long. Um, you know, you're just putting a, a small amount of paint with a large amount of thinner. And now we'll get into the thinner. Um, the tank that I built years ago in the 90s that took months to dry, I used 
turpentine to thin the oils because that's what painters use. That's what I had. I was learning oil painting. I had turpentine and it was good quality turpentine. I think the quality of the turpentine might have added to the drying time. So the reason why artists like oils is because they do take a long time to dry and they can take a long time to dry um, so that they can keep coming back over weeks and months and work the oil paint further, adding colors, taking some off, using palette knives. Um, and that's exactly what happened with this model I was doing. I, I put, I used the turpentine in my burnt umber, or no, raw umber, I think, yeah, raw umber. And it, you know, it just kind of went on a little bit, kind of almost gooey or sticky. Uh, the whole model went kind of glossy and it took Literally, it probably took about seven months before you could touch it without without the paint feeling tacky. So, do not use turpentine. I guess that is my long-winded message. <laughs> Don't use it, because it's going to fuck your shit up. And you're really going to swear, and you'll probably have to, like, at least drinks, at least drink a few drinks. Um, maybe, maybe worse. You know, you're going to feel really bad, especially if you've invested a lot of time up to that point in the project, painting and whatnot. Holy shit, what a tragedy. Um, so, thinner. So I'm going to set this aside because I'm just going to let this soak. I'll probably end up doing the wash in like an hour's time. Set that guy aside. Now, oh yeah, and when you set it aside, make sure you set it aside somewhere where you're not going to put your elbow in it because that also is kind of a crappy event to occur. Um, this stuff is what I use. It's solvent, it's dangerous, so obviously it's very cool, very metal, <laughs> um, and it is odorless, uh, odorless solvent, I guess. <laughs> Any kind of odorless um, thinner for brushes uh, is good. Uh, there's probably odor full solvents you can use too. I'm just not sure which one you would use. You, I would ask if you go to an art store to buy the oils, the people working there would probably. Um, this is ideal for diluting oil colors and cleaning brushes. Odorless solvent. Now, the thing about odorless solvent that kind of sucks in a way is that it is odorless, so you're not sitting there smelling stinky paint thinner fumes, but the fumes are still fucking there. So odorless is kind of like, kind of tricking you, tricking you into the, again, your brain cells go away. So you might have to trade a few brain cells for your uh, wicked oil wash. <laughs> I mean, some might argue that I've lost a few brain cells doing this. Maybe, maybe that's why some of my content is the way it is. Um, but this is the stuff to mix it with. Um, so needless to say, use, um, a well-ventilated area. Uh, you, even I have a vapor mask. I don't usually use it for oil washes. I have a window right by me usually. So I have the window open and I don't have my head like right over the oil wash. You know, I'm keeping a bit of a distance, but it is a little silly that, you know, you can't smell it, so, um, yeah. You can smell the oil paint, though, um, when you dilute it. So if you're getting a real strong smell of your oil paint, there's, well, obviously you're also getting fumes from this. So just be careful around this shit if you value your liver. If not, then fuck it. Go to town. But, uh, yeah. So, for our next trick... In a few minutes, we will start putting the wash on a vehicle. Well, actually, we'll start mixing the wash, and then we'll put it on the vehicle. So I'm going to take the uh, odorless thinner, and hopefully this stuff stays in focus for you. Just going to put a bit in a pot, like that. There'll be excess left over at the end, so that's all you need to do your entire wash project. Here I'm going to do three vehicles. Um, so let's get our palette here with the washes on it. Now I'm just going to work, uh, hopefully this stuff stays in focus for you, but I won't be able to
pay attention to, <laughs> to what's going on in the screen. So forgive me if it goes in and out. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to start, I always start with the, the main wash, which is going to be the uh, raw umber. So get a bit of the raw umber on a fairly, this isn't a great brush, but it's, it's not a terrible brush. It's an old brush, but it still has a bit of a point. And just keep adding the thinner to it. And as you see, if you're quick, it doesn't get a ton of the paint in your clean stuff. But even if it gets dirty a bit as you go, it's not the end of the world. And so you're getting it to a good consistency and you can test it out on the actual model as you go. So you might hear traffic in the background, but that's because I'm on street level and I have my window open so I don't inhale too many fumes. So I'm just going to fuck off these oils and clear out the screen. You've seen me mix it. It's about like this. You know, it's kind of the consistency of milk. And then I'm going to get my freshly painted model. We'll start with this Opal Blitz. Um, this is the Zvezda kit, but I put in the texture for the wood um, on the on the cab, not the cab, the, the box on the back, um, using a razor saw. But this will illustrate nicely how this stuff, see, I'm just touching it and it goes into the recesses perfectly. I don't have to work it a lot. Um, and that's why this stuff is so awesome and so much faster. I found with the acrylic stuff, you still had to really kind of nurse it along to get it to where you wanted it to go. Whereas this just goes. And if, if you have too much on, you can just go back and remove the excess with a bit of the thinner. But see how nicely that uh, goes. I also see other products like enamel products where they put them on really haphazard and then they come back later and wash it all off. But why would you want to do that bullshit? That's an extra fucking step that you don't need to do. It's like, look at this. It just beautifully goes in where it needs to go. Um, all in one. It's, you know, when this wash dries, it's ready to go. There's nothing further to do. You know, wiping off a bunch of excess shit just seems to me to be a waste. So I'm getting it, if you see in the tires here, getting it into all the wheel detail, the recesses. Um, and, and this dries reasonably fast. So it, if I look back later, once I get the rest of the model done, um, I can always add if, when needed. Very forgiving stuff to use. And also, so yeah, when I do this side, um, by the time I do the other side, this side will be dry enough that if there's any spots that it built up, I can just take it off with a bit of thinner right then, right there. I don't have to wait for it to dry once you're wash session is done, it's done. It's ready for the next step. There's no further stuff. Now, if you let this dry overnight, however, and then go back and try to take off a spot where you got too much, some excess, you're going to have a difficult time. So make sure you get it, get it right while you're doing it here. Hopefully this is staying somewhat in focus for you. But see how these details just start to come out and you know, it's so easy I'm able to half-ass focus on my camera and do, do the wash. So I'm just touching around the lines and it goes in and I'm moving the paint around. When I'm doing vehicles, I, I do the wash around the windshield before I paint it in because the wash gives you a nice outline to work inside so you don't, you know, mess up your paint job. Um, I just find it's easier to work to the outline than it is to just paint it up straight up. So, so I'm going to keep going um, with that and I'll come back later when it's done um, and show you if there are any spots how I can just take them off. I will be using, so I use the brown 
for all of the main details on the uh, on the vehicles. Um, and then I'll use black on things like the grills or any access panels that are visible, like say on the back of this broom bar, it's probably too close to the thing. Um, on the engine deck, the grills will get black wash and all of the uh, engine panels will get uh, black. Okay, so I've gone around and done most of my dark wash. I'm gonna do a bit more around the back here. But I thought I would just take the opportunity to show you um, how I blot out some of the excess. Um, or you can go in and add more too. Like as it dries, some of the wash is looking less um, pronounced in these cracks. So you can just come back and fire in another dose. The other thing I have close by is my um, cardboard because if you want to take out an area that has a bit excess, like there's a little excess along this line here, charge up your brush with a bit of the thinner and then blot it a bit on here so that there's not tons of thinner. If there's tons of thinner, it's just going to wash that back in. And as you see here, I'm just clearing it out. I'm going to clear it off the tops of these details and just bl keep blotting it out. And as I'm going, I'm, I'm constantly using the palette, um, going back and forth between the thinner and the wash, um, manipulating the consistency the way I want it. If it goes on a little thick, I just add a bit of thinner, blot it, thin it out on the model, and then add a bit more to the wash. And this is how you can regulate the consistency as you go um, pretty quickly. Um, it, it takes a while to get used to, um, but not too long. You get the hang of it pretty fast. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is when I put the decals on the truck, before I do my decals, and you'll see that in my previous video, which is on decals, if you've watched it and could make it through to the end, um, when I do my decals, I do a gloss coat on the entire vehicle. And so decals go on first, after the gloss coat, and then I leave the gloss coat for this wash. Um, Au revoir. God, I just lost my freaking train. <laughs> I leave, I leave the gloss coat on for for the whole wash step um, because the capillary action of the oils works better on a glossy surface. So the 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 gloss coat facilitates the uh, the decal step and the oil step, and then I'll let the oil dry for a good couple days before I hit it with the. Uh, acrylic matte varnish. Okay, so I've done my dark washes everywhere, the, the raw umber and the black, that is going out of focus of course, on the engine deck, um, and axis hatches, I've taken off the excess, and like I mentioned before with the dark, you can kind of extrude it down to make some streaks, just don't go overboard, you want it like I said earlier, like a few streaks is good. It's going to be enough. You don't want to overdo it. At least I find, in my opinion, on a 15 mil, um, less is kind of more. So I've done my dark washes here and on the truck. Um, now I'm going to go for a lighter, dustier sort of weathering wash. And what I'm going to do, let's get the paints here. We're going to take a bit of the white, just using a kind of crappy brush. Maybe that's a bit too much white. I'm going to take a tiny bit of black, just a tiny bit, because we don't want it super gray. I'm going to get a bit of the thinner. And we're going for kind of a mid to light gray. And I'm going to use this for the truck tires and the undersides of um, the truck that are visible. And uh, sometimes I use it for my tank tracks because the tank tracks are quite dark. So the light wash kind of does the opposite to the dark wash on the lighter areas. Um, but I, I find on my German tanks, I kind of like to keep the tracks looking dark. So I probably won't. It's not 
as realistic, but I like the effect better. Um, and I sort of play with that, like, the line around between realism and just making it look good. I think my goal is to make my vehicles look kind of like the illustrations in an Osprey book or a Squadron Signal book. You know, I, ever since I was a boy, I enjoyed those illustrations. And I try to make my painting reflect that. So I'm just adding the ochre until I get it about the darkness that I want. I don't want it too dark. And and it's just, you can see how yellow this is. The, the black and the white have just dulled it down a bit. So it's not entirely yellow. I do believe that this wash, or this, um, yeah, this color, I should say, is really close though to my Dunkelgeld, <laughs> so I've had that before where it just kind of disappears. Um, so I might add a bit more white just to give it a bit more contrast to the vehicle. Or introduce another color, like maybe a bit of the raw umber. Just to, just a bit though. I don't want to darken it too much. Take some of that out. Just a bit to uh, sort of change the tone a bit. It's getting a bit too dark. It's going to wash off a bit of the oil. Maybe add a bit more white. There, now it seems a bit, a bit less um, similar to the, to the Dunkelgeld when I hold it up. I used to do dot filters too, like those dot filters you see the 135 scale guys do, and they, they work all right, but again, it might be a bit overkill, I think. Again, you just need a few streaks, and a dot filter is going to put in many. I'm just going to add a touch of red, just again to add another color, just to make it a little bit more um, unique over... I think that's too much red. Take some of that out. Okay, I made it too pink. Add a bit more of the ochre. And I'll just keep mixing the color till I get something that I like. Yeah, so that seems to be about the consistency I like. I'm just going to move it around and just pretty much do the tire. I go back later and dry brush it again with the uh, black gray. And I just want it to look like some dust is sitting in the tire tread. That's basically all I'm going for here. And I'll just go around and do that with tires. And I'll also do that in the dust wells, or the, sorry, under the fenders. And just move around the whole truck. And I'll also do some streaks. So I just, uh, Hold it here, start the streak. It's quite stark at first. It's going to put a couple small ones on, but then again, using the paper and the thinner, I'm going to thin out my brush a bit, put some thinner on, and then tone down that streak. And I've put it over the decal, so it sort of ties in the decal, but the the decal is black, so that lighter color streak is going to show up. And, you know, that's that's good for that spot. We don't need to put much more than that on there for a streak. And I'll just move around the truck with the light stuff and the tanks. You know, the tanks, I'm just going to put streaks on with this. Um, but you could do this into the tracks too, depending. If you're doing like a desert tank or something, it looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to finish these and I'll show you at the end. Right.
So I've gone in and added a few streaks. Not too many, just a few here and there. Um, they'll blend in better when the whole thing is hit with that uh, matte coat. Um, and then I do a bit of uh, dry brushing and a bit of, uh, you know, I'll add some textures and things to the tracks and the um, muffler and the tools. Um, but basically that's how it's done. Um, at this point, probably if I were to go in with thinner, the oil would be too set. Um, so if after I spray it with the matte coat, I find areas that are a little excessive or whatever, um, you can tone it down with your weathering, um, put some chipping or some other kind of element there. But overall, it should look pretty good. Here's how our washes look once the uh, matte coat is put on. These aren't entirely finished yet, but I wanted to get these videos done for your viewing <laughs> pleasure <laughs> or displeasure, whatever it is. Either you're an enthusiastic dirtbag like me or a masochistic something or else. Um, anyway, here it is. Uh, well on its way to completion. I just thought I'd show you how the, um, the uh, washes look after we put on the matte coat and how it's bringing out the detail which is quite lovely on this Svesda kit. And here is the, uh, the Jagdpanzer are four so you can see the access panels and some of the streaking has started. I might add streaks later. You can add streaks with the oil once it's matte. Um, I used to do full on like dot filters, but I, you know, I kind of found with 15 mil, really you don't need to go all out with streaks. Just a few really does the job. Um, if you're doing like 20 mil and, and up, then yeah, I would, I would do things like dot filters and whatever, but just adding a couple streaks here and there and, you know, sort of looking back at it like, oh, maybe I'll put another one or put a rust streak or something. You can do that all after the fact, after it's uh, got the um, matte coat on. And here is the truck. I uh, got the idea for this crazy, you know, ridiculous amount of foliage from the old Panzer Color books from the 70s. Um, and, you know, using my net camouflage net technique, which you might have already seen the video. If not, you can check that one out. It's on my channel somewhere. Just check it out. Um, but yeah, in Normandy, probably in the East Front too, at a certain point, you know, the Germans lost air superiority. So every single vehicle on the ground was a <laughs> target. So they used to go to great lengths to try and uh, hide them. Um, but as you can see, the uh, details really jump once you get it uh, sprayed up with the matte coat. And I've probably said this a million times, but I'll say it again in case you didn't see that. But this uh, AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish is the bomb, if you like Ultra Matte. Maybe if you're doing a larger scale, you think the Ultra Matte might be a bit much um, because you know armor actually has kind of a you know almost like a semi gloss well not semi gloss but more satiny sort of finish in real life so once you start getting into the larger scales you know maybe you don't want ultra matte but if you like ultra ultra matte then this is the stuff um, and it doesn't go cloudy and it doesn't wreck your freaking hard work. It just makes your hard work look good. In fact, it, it's almost like there's some kind of magic ingredient in there that just equalizes everything. And just everything looks great when you spray it with this. That's all I'll say. Not that I'm an AK salesman, but uh, I will definitely put attention to a good product if I think it'll help you guys out and make your modeling geeky times as satisfying as I find them. So uh, yeah, that's kind of a wrap up of how I do my oil washes um, using oil paint. I mean, there are a lot of products out there 
you know, but uh, if you want if you want to get a tube of oil paint and have it last for 10, 15, I guess mine are 20 years. Shit, they're almost 30 years old. Fuck, I'm getting old. Anyway, yeah, I mean, can't go wrong with that one tube of oil paint lasting you almost 30 years and it's still going strong. And the black, I'll be long dead before I'll ever <laughs> be able to finish up that black one. So, uh, yeah, just something to consider as an alternative to, um, you know, hobby products. There's a lot of great fine art products that end up being cheaper because they're not sort of niche products. And uh, that's all I'll say about that. As per normal, my standard greasy metal format, I'll <laughs> show, you know, some stills of stuff where the washes made it look particularly good. And uh, we'll see you next time for the next Greasy Miniature Dork Universe adventure. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'm sure... Well, God, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's going to be good. We'll see. That's subjective. Bye for now. Boy. Wouldn't you rather watch, like and subscribe to a miniature dark universe, you pair of cunts?